Hello, Michael. Great to see you. Long time. Hello, Hi. Uber. Hi, hello. Then we have Nick and Nick. Great to see you. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Michael, you're in the States? You're in Germany? Where are you at? I'm in the States. All right. I think yep. one Nick is in the UK, one Nick is in Canada. Is that correct? Yeah, as long as there's two Nicks in any meeting, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the UK Nick. Canada Nick. Great. So I think we'll give it another one or two minutes. More people are joining. And then we get started. I'm here with Juliet. There's Karina. Tony is there from Sina. Welcome, Charles. Great to see you. There's Tony. We had many more people that confirmed, so I hope they're still joining. Um, but yeah, sometimes things come up and people are not able to join. But I think then um, due to interest of time, we can get started. Welcome to this uh, event of the Africa Social Innovation Circle, how we call it. And I think most of you know me, Etienne. Um, the founder of Sina. There's also Tony, who is one of our uh, yeah, members of Django International, our main community. I'm here with Juliet, who is an alumni from Sina and a social entrepreneur. You'll hear much more from her. There's Karina, who will present as well her findings from her uh, research. And uh, yeah, as you know, Sina, we are unleashing the potentials of people from disadvantaged and marginalized backgrounds to become social entrepreneurs through a model that allows people to overcome limiting beliefs, to take up responsibilities and gain skills to create their own social enterprises over time so that people create their own solutions, their own um, opportunities, and not just jobs, but also create jobs for others through social enterprises. And recently we had a very exciting event, the second edition of the SINA Summit, where now we have nine SINA communities in five in Uganda in different refugee camps as well as the main space where we're at. Currently, we have seen us in different refugee camps for South Sudanese refugees, Congolese refugees, Burundian refugees, but also seen us in the Kenyan refugee camp, uh, one Sina there. We have one Sina in a refugee camp in Zimbabwe and we have two Sinas in Congo, in Bukavu and in the capital, Kinshasa. Um, where again, marginalized people and people with disabilities are able to become social entrepreneurs. And the summit brought everyone together for 10 days in Uganda. And we discussed about the future of SINA and had different inputs and collaboration projects to build more the sense of community between the different SINAs, how we can engage everyone. And there's a nice video that we produced um, that gives you in three minutes, maybe quick um, introduction because Sina has grown not just from one community that some of you have uh, visited or known, but now into nine communities um, all around Africa and more communities are upcoming. We have replicators currently in Sina and Uganda from Tanzania, two, one from the mainland, one from Zanzibar, another team from Cape Verde where we're working together to, to replicate it. So the movement is growing and to give you maybe a nice impression before we get more into introductions and then into our speakers, I would love to share the video with you. Um, and I'll do that directly here over Zoom to give you an impression what has happened some two weeks ago. It has been a great experience for everyone who participated. 
One of the experiences I had, I enjoyed mostly, was mental health. I've been really, really impacted, and I look forward to start using one of the strategies and skills so that I look on how best to invite uh, most uh, investors and donors to come and work with us in the Tonga refugee camp. We had uh, interesting presentations aiming to um, bring all the Sino communities together to have collaboration and find the solutions for all the struggles and challenges we have in order to have a global movement together. I have been part of the summit and it has been a wonderful experience. We have been involved in different activities like the morning yoga, it has really enlightened my spirit. Out of this summit we have great ideas that bring our communities together and ensure that we build systems that improve how we empower young people in our own communities. And we looked at the framework to improve the framework, uh, the operation part of organizations, but also uh, brainstorming about possible ways to raise finances that are able to help our communities to develop. So most of the things that I've liked in this summit is, was about open spaces regarding people that have specific needs. Like we can talk about female scholars and also scholars that have uh, physical disabilities. So most of, of the experience for me has been to get to know these people and uh, listen to all their stories. After a mental health gym, I've managed to know what I want in life. It was so great. Since we don't want to go alone, we always work together as a community and make sure we go far, all of us as a senior community. We landed straight into the summit. We flew in from Denmark and when we arrived, it was all happening all at once. Everyone was here from uh, the whole of uh, of Africa. Uh, you know, it's it's so cool to see people coming from from all these different parts with all their different passions and all their different projects. What is the fruit of our labor? What is the output of our input? And it's been nice hearing the different ideas that people have put together from the different inner communities on projects that they are going to work on. We the dashboard team, we won three thousand US dollars. Um, to help us uh, to be able to come out with um, an idea called like software so that it can connect all SINA members together. Yeah, <clears throat> that hopefully gives you a quick impression on our uh, summit 2023, bringing together in total about 50 people from all the nine different communities and from the different countries. And uh, yeah, with this, I would love to get to know each other. And um, like always, we could um, start with someone that already knows um, us and Sina and would be great to share who you are. You can also put that into the chat and maybe if you want any links to your organizations or what you do. And then also, um, what has brought you here? Um, if you have a connection to Sina, what is the connection or why are you already part of this uh, circle that we are creating? If you are, um, would be great to share. And uh, yeah, I we can do it uh, popcorn style, meaning whoever the corn that is ready to pop um, can get started and then uh, pass it on to someone else uh, after. So it would be great to get to know each other. Who is ready? Michael, go ahead. Sure, I'm ready. Um, all right, so why am I here? Because you sent me an invitation. I think my timing reaching out to you was perfect. So I really kind of managed to <laughs> join you here. Um, yeah, I've been in, uh, in, at SENA in PG a couple of years ago. Um, I, I work, I still work for, for Johnson & Johnson till tomorrow, by the way. After that, I'm going to be retired. But um, I, when I was working for Johnson & Johnson, we had an African Innovation Challenge and we were finding and incubating healthcare-related startups uh, in, in Africa. And um, Uganix, which came out of SENA, was one of them. 
Um, so that was that. That was one of the things, and I was there, and I was really impressed with what with both, uh, which what Etienne and, and 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 all the other people they were doing, and I ended up recommending it to my nephew to go there for for a couple of, of months to to sort of go through the training, and I have to say he came back and he was a changed person. I mean, better, <laughs> better. It was a really he was it was a, a life changing experience for him and. Um, so I've been a strong supporter of of Cena since then. Thank you. Whom are you passing it on to? Well, Uwe. Okay, I don't ask why <laughs> you pass it to me. Uh, yes, I'm Uwe from uh, Germany. I'm working as a moderator and coach for people and for teams to help them to get to what they think it is impossible for them to get there. And uh, together with my wife, uh, I visited Uganda two years ago. And uh, due to Corona restrictions, we only had a very limited uh, visit to the Sina campus in Kampala. But we were deeply impressed by the work there and the people. So I decided to support Sina wherever it is possible. And I'm quite happy uh, to take part today. and. Uh, the video was very impressive, so hopefully everything continues in this good direction. Then I push forward the, the popcorn to Nick. There's two. There are two, okay. I'll, 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 I'll go, Uwe, because okay. we're closer than Nick in Canada. Um, yeah, so uh, my name is Nick Howell. I'm based in the UK. Uh, I've been interested in entrepreneurship in East Africa for the past uh, seven or eight years. Um, yeah, just uh, giving grants, uh, microfinance, be it debt or, or equity, just helping entrepreneurs where I can in the region. Um, I first came across Sina hmm, a couple of years ago, I guess now, um, introduced by, uh, by somebody in the Sina family, uh, who unfortunately is not, uh, not with us today. Um, and uh, was lucky enough to also visit uh, the center outside Kampala last September. Uh, stayed overnight and was suitably impressed with the setup there. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that's me in a nutshell. If you're wondering why I'm a bit wobbly, I, I had an ACL reconstruction last Wednesday. So I'm a bit laid up at the moment. Um, and that's why you'll see the screen going like this. I've got this balancing on my good knee. Um, so anyway, um, I'll pass it over to the other Nick in Canada. Yeah, we still muted. Gee, after four years of this, I should know how to do the unmute thing. But um, yeah, I'm in, I'm in uh, Toronto. Generally in Montreal today, just um, <clears throat> take care of some things. Uh, I met Sina last summer. I was uh, visited. It was actually Charles Holmes who introduced me. And um, but I've been working in Uganda for about fourteen years, um, supporting an organization that is rescuing kids from the street. And um, it was about twenty-five kids that uh, we basically put through school. And um, so I, I can see the, the long term cost of trying to create job seekers in a way. And uh, when I heard uh, uh, Etienne talk about creating job makers, it just totally made sense to me that that's that's a much more uh, fundamental solution and approach. And um, so I'm excited to hear how it's how it's working and get an update today and uh, find out more and, and uh, you know, continue to give my support to to Sina because I, I think it actually gets to root cause uh, or much more root cause and um, has much more hopeful outcomes for me. The the possibilities are much greater than, than uh, what I've been trying to do so far. So um, yeah, excited to hear what, what, what the updates are and hear about the research if if there's uh results there that's great and uh, i will pass it to charles who uh, introduced me thanks nick good morning everyone i'm in vancouver british columbia and my connection to cena actually indirectly began in 1992 can we do it when i was start and then uh, it's going oh 
um, I was introduced to uh, a man named Mulawama Mosheshe in uh, Western Uganda, who had started something called the Uganda Rural Training Development Project, which has evolved into a, a university for uh, for women in Western Uganda that our family has been supportive of for many, many years. And eight years ago, I took my daughter um, to visit Uganda and discovered Sina through TripAdvisor. And we ended up going and staying at the campus and absolutely falling in love with the work that's uh, that's being done there. Um, it's just been a delight to introduce people like Nick and and Etienne, you'll be pleased to know I was talking to Nathan Gray yesterday. And Michael, like your nephew, uh, this friend uh, sent his son to do an internship uh, and is there, I guess, right now as we speak. And he said he's getting raving reports and it feels like his son is becoming a different person. So I think there's a, uh, a, a an, another potentially even revenue stream, Etienne, to be thinking about around... Uh, I don't know if I say troubled young people or young people looking for transformational changes from outside of Africa, but uh, Nathan is thrilled that his son is there and uh, look forward to hearing more. Nice to meet you all. I will pass it to Karina. Oh, Karina, yeah. <clears throat> yes, hello. My, uh, my name is Karina Schenk. I'm from Austria. I am the researcher who did the research study at Chengdu International last year. So I'm going to be presenting my research results mostly in the next half an hour to you. And uh, yeah, I think uh, you'll get to know more about me when I'll present uh, the, the thesis. And I pass it on to Tony. Yes, hi everyone. My name's um. Tony, I am from Uganda and I am part of the team that is running Django International, the, the main community of Sina. And I know a few faces here. Nick uh, was here last year and we went um, down uh, at a local restaurant and ate some nice meat, my favorite meat, which is uh, pork. Um, hopefully, Nick, when you come back next time, we can do that again. I am glad to be part of this network and uh, looking forward to the interactions here today. I pass in, I pass on to Juliet. Yes, Juliet. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Juliet Namju. I'm the founder and CEO at Chimuli Collection. So we'll be more hearing more about our transforming work. I'm an alumni of the Shosho Innovation Academy, Sina and Impiji. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Great. So yeah, then I would pass it over now to Karina to share with us more. She's currently also back in Uganda. She took part in the summit as well, and she presented her results already to the members of uh, SINA and now also to all of us. And uh, she's sitting somewhere in the middle of a national park, but found some internet. And uh, yeah, we we'll hope it will be a good connection. So Karina, over to you and uh, then later to uh, Juliet. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm just gonna share my screen quickly. Yeah. I hope it will work. Okay, can you all see and hear me? Yeah, great. Yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you very much for attending the, the Zoom call tonight. I'm happy to present you my thesis, uh, which is called Social Entrepreneurship as a Path to Developing Freedoms, an Empirical Study about SENA and its Impacts on Individual Agency. So myself, I'm Karina Schenk. I have done a master's program, social work, social policy and social management in Austria. And uh, I came across Sina uh, in a course of my studies. And I decided I wanted to cooperate because I really liked the idea. And I really thought that it makes a big difference to uh, lives of people. That was my intuition. And I wanted to do some research on that. That's why I decided to do that study. So um, this is the structure of the presentation. 
So I'm going to start with the research question, then I'll explain the theoretic frame, the method methodology, the results, conclusion, and um, then the limits and suggestions will be in the end. So uh, I said I was doing a, a research study and what we, what we always need to do a research study is uh, a research question. So what I was asking myself about SENA is how the SENA empowerment program impacts the participants agency. So when I say participants, I mean the scholars, the SENA scholars. And um, to break that research question down, I want to show you what I mean with the SENA empowerment program, which is the following. It's uh, about the SENA empowerment concept. So um, there's, as you probably, most of you already know, there's five stages of, of the training that the, school, that the scholars undergo at Django International. And um, like starting with confusion stage and uh, going up until mastery stage, where um, ideally the people who are in mastery stage should be uh, empowered, self-sustainable, and self-reliable social entrepreneurs. So that would be what I call the empowerment program. And um, then another concept that is needed to be explained is the term of agency. So what is meant by agency? I decided to use this very broad definition of agency, which says that agency is a capacity of a person to define aspirational goals, first of all, and then to coordinate knowledge, skills, attitudes, resources, which are both internally and externally available to the person in order to take action to achieve the stated goals. So simply put, it means you can define and uh, you can set goals and you're also able to achieve them in the end. That's what's meant by agency. So um, again, the question was, how does the SENA empowerment program impact the agency, like this capacity of the scholars. Um, yeah. <laughs> so another, like trying to bring these two into relation, the, the term of empowerment, which is always used very often at Changu International and at all SENAs and agency, simply put what the literature says is that empowerment is the expansion of agency. <clears throat> and now I, want, I already wanna come to the practical part. So what I did, I went to Changu International about a year ago, it was in February, 2022. And it, I decided to conduct a mixed qualitative approach, which means I did participatory observation and uh, noted my observations down in autoethnographic protocols. And then I also conducted six, uh, 12 interviews. Uh, six, I had six female and six male interviewees. And I evaluated all the data that I won through the software MaxQDA, which is a qualitative analysis software and uh, qualitative content analysis by Cookhertz, which is a German scientist. So coming to the results, part two. So what I found out, and I think this is very important, like, so there was a basic frame that I took from the literature and that I had to adapt to the data that I want. So what I found out is that the SINA or Changu International, offers a specific opportunity structure to their students. An opportunity structure is the environment that is offered to people to either um, increase or emphasize or impede agency. So um, in any environment, the opportunity structure will be different. And I have found out that at SENA at Changu International, since the scholars are taking out from their usual environment and put in a totally new environment, uh, Django International 
or I always call it still always call it Sina, uh, offers a very specific opportunity structure, which I call the Sina opportunity structure. And this opportunity structure offers different factors that again then work on assets, capabilities, and skills of scholars that are necessary to develop agency. So I'll start with the first pillar, which is the opportunity structure. And I'll show you what I found out about, about the opportunity structure or which are the factors of, of the opportunity structure. So these six pillars or six spheres um, are the social, cultural, and political context, the Sina culture, education and training, the social enterprise, people relationship and networks, and then there's also other factors. And I wanna go into detail about three of those spheres a little bit. And one of them is the what I call Sina culture, which is which consists of those seven different elements that I could have identified when I did my research. So we have eye level instead of hierarchies, which means that it's always intended also through the holography system. If, if you know what the holography system means, uh, uh, otherwise I can explain you later, but you can like, does everyone know what holography is? Or does anyone not know? I don't know if I say I see everyone, but I think you know. Um, no, otherwise, sorry? It's all good. Yeah, great. All right. So through the holography system, but also through other um, factors, there is this approach of being on eye to eye level with with yeah with everyone. Everyone needs to be on eye level. And then then that we have diversity appreciation. So each and every individual is appreciated in how they are in the in the in in the way in the special way they are. And uh, an arrow culture, I think that is uh, speaking for itself. And then we have nonviolent communication as a very important element that uh, helps fostering agency. Then potential positivity, meaning that uh, there is the belief that everyone has big potential to grow. Seeing opportunities in challenges would mean that you always make the best of challenges that you like create something from a challenge, from a problem, which is the social entrepreneurship approach. And then we have the together more can be done, meaning that one person can do a lot, but two or three or four people can do even more. Then uh, the next term that um, I have picked is what I call the teacher, because um, a Chang'u International there are no usual teachers, but they are called trainers. And I thought it would be nice to make a word out of Sina and teacher, so I call them teacher. And those teachers, they don't uh, only transmit knowledge to the scholars, but they provide space and contents for scholars to generate ideas and knowledge and acquire skills on their own. It's what they call facilitation training style. And they also ask many questions to activate the scholars' reflexive and creative thinking capacities and lead scholars to, to connect what they learned to their previous knowledge and experiences, making them more effective learners. And that all in the end also influences the agency, like the possibility of setting and achieving goals of the scholars. And then lastly, in this pillar, in the opportunity structure pillar, we have the SENA platform, which I found out is very, very important for agency. And the SENA platform I divided into the so-called accountability partners and testimonies and role models. And here you can see um, examples on how the accountability partners influence agency enhancing factors. So for example, hope is an agency enhancing factor that will help um, developing agency. Uh, and also self-esteem, emotional intelligence, perseverance, 
and different skills and capabilities. Okay, then we come to the second pillar. Again, I show you the graph here, so you see which uh, what I'm talking about. So we are, we were talking about this uh, uh, scene opportunity structure, and now we're talking about the assets, capabilities, and skills that are necessary to create agency. And those two, just to uh, one more time explain it, they are influencing each other. They are interrelated. So the scene opportunity structure is influencing the development of assets, capabilities, and skills necessary for agency, and also the assets, capabilities, and skills, they are working back on the opportunity structure. All right, so what I have found out, like the, the different elements of the assets and capabilities that I have identified are the following, uh, of which the three that are in that orange frame are the most seem to be the most important because they were most mentioned. So psychological capital and capabilities, social capital and capabilities, and human capital and capabilities. Um, I'll only present two of them. Uh, one of them being self-esteem, um, in the literally called uh, in the which in the literature is called to be one of the most important factors for um, developing agency and self-esteem here, as I understand it, and as the literature understand, understands it, is the belief in one's abilities and worth. And in this list here, you can see which elements of the scene opportunity structure um, are influencing, are positively influencing self-esteem of scholars. So that could be, for example, when they learn tools for soul goal setting in, in a session or uh, the social enterprise and the impact of the social enterprise. Um, then um, the support from one-on-one coaches and mentors, which are the accountability partners, or again, being on eye to eye level with teachers, trainers and coaches. And the next, like, uh, next element of the of the second pillar of the asset skills and capabilities then would be social capital, which is also uh, which has been found out to be extremely important. Um, yeah, someone just asked if we're okay. It's uh, <laughs> that's interesting in the channel. So. Um, what I found out about the social capital of the scholars at Changu International is that the, there is an expansion of network among like-minded people, uh, among people who have uh, similar ideas, visions, and goals. And that people there are getting to know inspiring and supportive personalities, projects, and organizations. Then, um, those contacts, they also provide uh, possibilities to cooperate with others, with other social enterprises, organizations. Um, then they, the visibility of the social enterprise or the person, they will also increase. And uh, opportunities for sp sponsors, donors, organization, and so on, who are willing to provide funding will uh, arise. And what I think is very important um, is that a social entrepreneur can, um, in the best case, serve as a link between those people who are more powerful in society, the more powerful social groups, um, and the less well-off who are in need of um, help, support, or empowerment. Okay, that's that. And now I come to the conclusion. So concluding, Sina offers a specific opportunity structure that supports the development of capabilities and skills necessary for agency, as already mentioned. Uh, the SENA Empowerment Program supports scholars in identifying their values, objectives, and their purpose, and teaches them skills to translate their goals into exercising and gaining agency. 
but also the community lab and the social enterprise help gaining various skills and capitals, which are necessary for training and exercising a chantic capacity. On the other hand, um, some elements who can support the development of agency, they can also hamper it. For example, free responsibility or holacracy. Um, if free responsibility is not understood fully, or if it's one-sided, like if people only enjoy the freedom, but don't understand the responsibility aspect, then uh, it could actually be um, something that blocks them from developing agency. And uh, what are the limits of my study? Uh, and open questions that I would still have to investigate. So it is unclear what the impact of the personality of someone is on the development of agency in Changu International. It is also unclear, but it seems um, it seems to be a big um, impact is the role of the scholar selection. So to which extent are applicants already empowered when they are picked? Uh, to enter the SENA empowerment program and what do they need to bring? Um, then there, there is the question of the dropout. Um, some people, they can successfully complete the program, others they drop out early or they drop out. And what are the reasons? What are the factors for the dropout? And then connected to that is the dropout rate, which seems to be especially high among girls. Um, why is it so high? Um, which are the factors for that? Then there's also um, the issue of internal power structures that might be hidden at Chengdu International, um, who could complicate or impede the, the empowerment of scholars. And yeah, the limit or something that has to be added is that the study that I've done is only the beginning. It has opened a lot of space, a lot of opportunities to dig in deeper. And um, I think that a lot more research, especially on the long term, um, needs to be done on either this or other related topics. So lastly, I would uh, come to suggestions that is resulting from the study. Um, so I would say that research on uh, gender-specific empowerment would be extremely interesting to do because uh, SINA is facing that gender-specific um, dropout rate. And it would be, I think it would make a lot of sense to research on that. Why is it girls that drop out more easily? We have speculations, but we don't have facts. So it's always better to get facts and then uh, find out how to deal with it. Then, uh, as already mentioned, the accountability partners, trainers and partners are very, very important for the empowerment, for a developing agency, for the scholars. So investment in them is probably a good idea. Uh, as already mentioned, long-term research and establishing a holacracy cycle at Chengdu International for doing research would also be a good idea. <clears throat> and then the last two points, investigation in the scholar selection process, finding out uh, what is the role of the scholar selection, how it can be done in, in a fair, in a great way so that people like can be empowered, um, like let's say also maybe um, increasing the efficiency of the scholar selection of, uh, of the empowerment program in total. And then lastly, um, would be good to use the results of both this research and the research to come to further develop the SENA empowerment program that I was talking about right now. Yeah, that's it from my side. If you have any questions, the Q&A section is after Juliet's presentation, uh, but you can keep them from there. Thank you for your attention. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Karina. And then we go over to Juliet, who is one of the persons also you interviewed. And despite the fact that we have more girls dropping out, females drop out, we also have the vast majority of successful social entrepreneurs being female. So, and Juliet is one of them. So she'll tell us more about her background, her story, and her social enterprise. So Juliet, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Etienne. I'll again reintroduce myself. I'm Juliet Namju, the founder and CEO at Chimuli Collections, a fashion label that transforms plastic polythene into durable, sustainable, waterproof garments and accessories while creating employment opportunities for people living with disabilities and the youth in Uganda. It's a women-led organization and 90% we are working with women. Um, I suffered from the discrimination my parents faced for being disabled and I was inspired by my grandma who was a tailor. Um, I grew up with my single grandma in a remote and rural village in Uganda because my parents were victimized by disability. My grandma was a tailor and inspired me as a child to use cutoffs and plastic waste that I could gather from the village and blend them with plastic, plastic waste and create my own dolls since she could not afford buying me at least a single doll. Uh, as a child, this started changing my mindset towards waste and I started to see the value in protecting the environment. I was fortunate that um, my grandma uh, took me to school and I finished high school. So um, when I finished high school, she didn't have enough money for me at least to join the university, but she had this little money for me to do a short course in any course that I would want to do. So I decided to do fashion and design, a tailoring course for just six months, um, where I attained it in Kampala. So fortunately, I, I, I got the certificate, but afterwards I went back home because I didn't know what was next. I was just having the certificate in my hand and I could not do anything. So I was fortunate that I was being connected to Social Innovation Academy where I was being selected as a scholar and I transformed my life into challenges. I transformed my challenges into an opportunity of coming up with a social enterprise. Um, so I found a group of youths who had the same challenges like mine. One of them is Zahara Nabilia, she is not around. And we joined our heads together. We came up with Chimoli Collection, specifically to fight for the conservation of the environment and inclusion of women living with disabilities, youths, refugees, um, such that they can also become so sustainable and independent. So here comes the thing. Why did we come up with Chimuli? I've already talked about the story. So Chimuli, it's a local word, which means a flower here in Uganda. So we turn what people see as trash into something beautiful like a flower. And we do go to construction sites, to uh, landfills in Kampala and in other communities. We collect this waste, we collect cement bags, we collect sugar sacks like this one. Uh, we collect tetra packs for milk cartons. Uh, we collect um, other polythene bags, plastic bottles. We bring it at our waste collection center, sort it, wash it, dry it, uh, pack it, and later deliver it to our women living with disabilities. So they cut it, blend it with African fabrics, and tailor it into sustainable products like raincoat jackets, uh, makeup kits. You can have a look. We have pencil bags inside. Uh, laptop bags, and many more. We also create and employ, train women living with disabilities, hands-on skills of creative tailoring, 
and on how to turn plastic waste into fashion. So the women that we work with and train are people with hearing impairments and those with physical disabilities. So these women are able to learn these skills after learning, they become trainers of trainers in their communities and also create employment for themselves and are living and sustain themselves. Um, our success so far, we have, uh, we held a fashion show in 2019 here at the Shosho Innovation Academy, which was broadcasted by CNN and um, to enable our people living disabilities and uh, showcase the products they make from plastic waste and also fight for their inclusion. We have trained over 86 of them and 25 of them have been able to create their own employment. We have upcycled over 50,000 kgs of plastic waste for the five to five years, for the past five years, and nine into 9,000 garments and accessories which have been sold both local and globally. And our raincoat jackets were showcased at the UN Global Weeks in New York. That was in 2018. And recently in COVID, uh, we innovated an inclusive eco face mask. Unfortunately, I didn't come with one. So this face mask, it had a transparent wind on the lips to enable people hard of hearing communicate during signing because there are major beneficiaries whom we work with so they couldn't protect themselves from the virus. They could remove the mask while communicating. And even as their trainers, we could always remove the mask. So we could see ourselves being easily uh, contracted by COVID-19. So that's why we came up with this mask. And it was really a success. We managed to generate more sales and profits that sustained us, distributed and donated over 2,000 face masks to freely to people hard of hearing in schools, uh, in communities. And also we won an award for Commonwealth Innovation Award because of this face mask. We have also won different awards and um, we are able to create more impact in our communities and also fight for the conservation of the environment. Because when you look at Uganda, some of you have come to Uganda, majorly Kampala, over 900 tons of plastic waste are freely disposed of. Not only plastic waste, but waste. It is a global huge challenge that Uganda is facing. So as Chimuli, that's why we came up with these solutions to fight for the conservation through fashion, employ people, transform communities, and see our country shining. And we're not only uh, creating our solutions here, but we want to expand to pattern with some SINA um, um, scholars that have gone outside, especially those who are replicating the idea of SINA, so that we can also train their refugees, uh, our model, and be expanding and scaling up. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Julie. Then, uh, yeah, you've had Karina present her results and Julie her uh, story and enterprise. So yeah, we have time for questions and uh, comments, answers about Karina or Julie. Um, over to all of us. All right, I, I, have, I have questions, lots of questions. Um, Let's start with with Julie. So um, I can recommend. I, I just sent a link. There is currently an initiative going on from the Africa African Diaspora Network that's in the U.S. That's uh, people from Africa that live in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, and they have every year a um, uh, initiative that's called Builders of Africa's Future, and they're looking essentially for startups like yours. So. They're currently taking um, applications. It's not too hard to, apl uh, to apply, so it doesn't take a very long time. I highly recommend that you go for it. I'm working with those people, so I, I, I know they would be interested, okay? No, no guarantees, but I mean, it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, then I have a question for, um, for Karina. You have one slide where you have the word error in it and that is for me is like 
working with African entrepreneurs, um, one of the biggest issues that I see a lot is the, the 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 fear of making mistakes, right? Which has to do partially with the you know, colonial um, education system. Uganda seems to be a little bit better than than many other countries. Have you have you been able to sort of quantify the importance of teaching people or letting people, the scholars, fail? Because failure is probably one of the best ways to learn and improve your skills. Yeah, that is um, that is that element. What I call the error culture. What I have. Um, summarized in this element, the Arab culture is that um, is, is something that I could perceive and but also was mentioned in the interviews that there is this way of letting people make mistakes without making them feel guilty or ashamed. And uh, it's, as I said, it's, it's both uh, learned in the training sessions as far as I have perceived it. and But it's also part of this uh, Sina culture. So it's kind of lived there from the people. And also this approach of um, not only like letting them make uh, mistakes and it's okay, but using the mistakes to, to learn from them and to grow from them. Um, so it's kind of, um, yeah, uh, a, a growth tool. Was that the question or was I giving the wrong answer? Thank you, thank you, yeah. yeah. Now, because yeah. I, 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 what I'd be interested in is how does Sina approach this, this, this the, the normally usual culture that, you know, uh, errors or mistakes have to be avoided. I mean, you know, the school system yeah. is, doesn't allow for it. How do you train people to to allow them to make mistakes? And use them. How do you do that? And that, that's 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 in, that's interesting because it, it, there's a big need for that. Yeah. Um, do you have some insights as well from your own experience that could be interesting. I think who Juliet? Yeah. Yeah, Juliet, uh, you can go if you like. Do you have experiences? Well, your experience with how failure is something that is kind of welcome in Sina. Have you experienced anything like that? Yes. Because it's something you can learn from. Yes. I've experienced. Um, I, I can give an example. Of, I, I talked about um, um, me finishing um, a short course in fashion and design, and I had the certificate there. I looked at myself as a failure, so I didn't know what to do with, with the certificate. So that's why I didn't come up. I, I didn't even talk about how Sina um, transformed my life into becoming a great entrepreneur right now. So before Sina, I wasn't able to express myself and give an overview of the challenges that affect me and my community. So after Sina, I'm able to, I was able to pursue my dreams and passion of uh, creating an, an enterprise that is creating impact both to the environment and the society at large. So um, I refer it to the challenge that I got. I got the certificate and I was just blue. I was like, maybe I'm going to sit home, uh, be there with my grandma. Like I didn't know what to do next. But through Sina, I've really transformed my life into becoming a great entrepreneur who is transforming people's lives through my work. Thank you. Can I ask a question? <clears throat> Karina, um, you land on an agency and I'm just wondering if you had some insight about, um, is agency the most important driver of success in terms of creating a, an organization as an entrepreneur? Mm, that's a really good question. Um, it seems that uh, it seems that they are interrelated. So if you want to become a social entrepreneur, yeah, I think that agency is one of the main factors or one of the main 
um, because it's not only agency is not just only one factor. It's like a, a bundle of skills, right? Of the skills and capabilities, as I explained, and assets. So having agency is like, um, it's not like because what what is like what is like the maximum of agency that would be another question because <laughs> like we all have agency in certain areas and in other areas we don't like we lack we, we, we lack agency so um i i would say that um many factors that are necessary for creating and running a social enterprise are um equal to the factors that are necessary uh, for having age or for agency creation. And um, being able to set, the, to define and set goals and then achieving them, um, especially in the professional world, I think, is, yeah, is, is very important for yeah. a social entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, but again, it's not like, because sometimes in one area, easy to set and achieve goals because you have the self-esteem you have the self-efficacy in that area but in the other other area it's very difficult because you're not empowered there or you have self-esteem or self-confidence issues so um yeah i would say definitely necessary in certain areas but not in all of them yeah and Etienne, it strikes me that all of this makes, and it's not part of the research, but makes a good question about the intake mechanism, the the selection mechanism. Does it does it need a minimum amount of agency already, or is that not a, a an element at all? Um, and I guess it ties to the why do people drop out very quickly? Um, that would be important to know in order to maximize the the process. Yeah, well, we do look for people from disadvantaged or marginalized backgrounds. There also has to be some kind of drive because some kind of innate drive is almost impossible to teach or it can take a very, very long time, mm. many, many years. So there needs to be this kind of drive to want to do something to transform your life. But also many times the drive is maybe not so clearly visible, but we kind of in the selection process, see some potential that we hope can be explored and seen. Huh? And I remember Julie mm -hmm. was also on a selection day. She was very, very shy and we uh, weren't able to see that there's actually this fire burning that you can see today. Um, and it worked out really, really well. So it is quite hard to really find potential in just one day of working in the selection day with the people. But right. uh, yeah, we're trying to get the support to the people that need it, but also look for this kind of flame that is there that you can ignite once in Sina. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've got a question if that's all right. Um, Juliet, nice to meet you again. Um, you might not recognize me. Uh, I'm also a mentor on the Because International Accelerator Program and you are part of the 2021 cohort. And I can only say that your story is very impressive and continues to be very impressive and massive congratulations to you and your team and what you've been able to achieve. Um, I, I've got a question, not for you actually, it's, it's for Karina uh, and, and a couple of things that sort of struck me from 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 your research. One is the, the sample and the sample size. Um, you, you took your sample from, I, I guess, um, Django International, but you're making yeah. assumptions about Cena. Um, how relevant do you feel that is? Um, because obviously CNA is in multiple countries and, and maybe that's also part of, Etienne might have some comments about that. Uh, and also... Um, can you, can you, the, can you ask, can you, just, sorry, I didn't understand the question. Yeah, your, your sample, so your 12 people that you, you interviewed yeah. uh, mm -hmm. were from uh, Django International um, yeah. and the uh, so six male, six female. Um, your conclusions are for Cena. Uh, Cena is you know, international, multi-centered. Uh, and my question is, how relevant are your conclusions for the group for Cena, rather than just Django International? So that's my first question. And, and my second question is with regards to agency. How do you feel moving forward? you can measure agency 
I the success of Cena. Um, it's I, I just just want to throw it out there. How how do you think you could? I want to check it back to numbers because that would be great if you if that was the case. But moving forward, I think it'd be really interesting to know how agency improves when certain things are implemented at CNF. Okay, so for the first question, this might be a little bit misleading. When I say Sina, I always talk about Chengdu International. So, um, yeah, that's that's the first question. I'm not talking about all the Sinas because I can't, because they are in so many different places, and they have like they have so many uh, different environmental factors there, and they also always influence like it. Like another Sina, like the I don't know Sina in uh, in another part of Uganda or in uh, in Congo, a refugee camp is so different from Chengu International. So I would never be able to uh, transplant it to like to generalize it to all the Sinas. So my research is really about Chengu International. Um, yeah. And the second question is uh, the, the the second question was how to measure agency. Well, there are a lot of measuring tools out there already, and th those are quantitative. And um, I was actually, I was thinking about doing quantitative research or, or mixed research in the beginning, um, but then I decided I would, uh, I would rather do qualitative to, uh, because I thought, because my idea was, or my, my intuition was that um, it is obvious that uh, Changu International impacts the agency of people there. Um, and I wanted to know how, um, how it shows and what they do. Um, so, so that was my aim of the research to see, okay, what also other life skills programs, for example, can learn from Changu International, especially with the social entrepreneurship approach, because that is something really, really special about uh, Changu International. Like other life skills programs, they might teach you to, uh, to tailor or they teach you to be, become a hairdresser or other skills, but the social entrepreneurship approach is really special about it. And it actually also shows in my research that the, the, the running and like establishing and running a social enterprise is the biggest factor for agency enhancing skills and capabilities. Um, so again, you said numbers, you don't think it's the right approach. Well, that's a scientific approach, <laughs> that's how we do it. But I also think that only measuring and like stating is not, is not, the, is not the full answer, I would say, that would be my idea um, to have some kind of grounded theory, mixed methods approach, which means like you go into field, you take research data, you evaluate them. Let's say you start like now from this point, uh, you could start actually researching on one or more factors, for, for example, self-efficacy or self-esteem. And you could do a survey and then you can could look into that, and then you could also look into how these small like parts that are small, um, actually it's called a belief or a, a psychological self belief, self esteem or self efficacy, how then they would interact or how they then would influence at Changu International the development of agency. Um, and then again, um, like you go deeper with qualitative. You know what I mean? <laughs> Does it make sense? Yeah. Or was yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. No, 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 no. That that makes that makes great great sense. And thanks for clarifying with, with the Django and seeing the thing. Uh, yeah. That also makes sense. Um, yeah. No, I I get that. I, I totally get that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other final question or comment?
Yeah, well then. Um, Question for so Juliet. Yeah, Nick, go ahead. Just wondering, Juliet, what's next for you in terms of the growth of your business? Um, first, we want to um, create a Chimuli teaching program for revenue. So since we are also focusing on uh, skills trainings in different communities for the beneficiaries, so we want to extend our model. I told you to already in refugee camps, uh, into communities, to organizations, and um, we are thinking of uh, creating revenue out of these trainings. And we are also looking at upcycling and collecting more plastic waste because the more waste we collect, the more products we produce and the more cells we generate and sustain ourselves. We are also looking at training more disabled persons, women, uh, our hands and skills of creative tailoring and crafts, and also partnering with more um, fashion designers. We want to introduce a project that goes into the line of uh, creating a Chimuli uh, program for more revenue, the skills. So we'll be introducing more projects and these projects, they will be in line with fashion and recycling. So we want to pattern with more organizations and um, fashion brands like one, for example, I can give one lady from Rwanda who is making good shoes and she's giving free trainings to other designers. So we want to pattern with her this year, get those skills and come teach our very own people and come up with that project. So our shoes are going to be kind of unique. They'll be blended with plastic waste and also recycled materials. Nice, and also uh, expanding our model, the franchise model to more countries, African countries and worldwide. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Karina, for presenting the results and for all the work and study you did. And Julie for inspiring us and, and your story and enterprise. Um, all this is part of our social innovation circle that we have started, which currently has six members uh, that are fully committed um, and we would wish to others to also join. So one, an invitation to you to maybe help us invite others for the next event, which will be on the 22nd of June. Uh, that's the date we have set for now, so you can mark that in your calendars. And who else maybe should be there? We're looking for people that are purpose aligned, that have something like all of you that connects to the social entrepreneurship in Uganda, to young people creating their own opportunities. And we're also asking for a financial commitment to be part of the circle. Um, and that supports us to yeah, help people like Julie to grow and to, the replications to happen. And in terms of emergency, sometimes as well, to have something that we can quickly respond to. So um, yeah, you can also support us with um, yeah, connections and advice to other um, people in the field and in the domains we are at. And yeah, I thank you for, for coming. I want to open once more the floor for any kind of um, checkout. That's a kind of a culture we do in Sina that everyone gets the chance at the end of a meeting to check out how you're leaving this meeting um, what are your biggest takeaways or any action steps or commitments you want to do? Um, so yeah, popcorn style again. For me, I can start um, by just saying thank you again. The recording will also be availed. There was many people that said they would come and didn't today. So they will receive the recording and can um, yeah still watch. And with this, uh, my checkout and uh, over to whoever is next. Okay, so then I will start. Uh, thank you very much for the presentations, for getting more insights. Uh, I think I'm I'm the I'm the new guy in the in the in the group, and for me everything is new. I really uh, appreciate the the research work, uh, and maybe I will come up with some questions, but later on I have to think about it. And also thank Julie for the for the story, and you really have a huge and big program in front of you as you just uh, explained. So. Good luck to you.
Thank you very much. And I hand over to Michael. All right, thank you. So I am very excited. I made a lot of notes. Um, Etienne, I'm gonna bombard you with emails after this. Um, I have a couple of really good ideas that, you know, there might be some good opportunities for Sina uh, in some connections, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll do that offline. Uh, it was really a pleasure to listen to, to Karina and, and, and Julie's presentation. Um, thank you so much. I'll hand it over to Nick Howell. Uh, yeah, nice to meet uh, meet you, Michael, Nick, and Uwe. Um, uh, Julia, uh, very inspiring story again. Thank you very much. Um, I did perk up when you said franchising. Uh, we must talk up, please, Etienne. Uh, give Julia my my email. Um, I was uh, I helped GB with their franchising model in in East Africa, so uh, maybe uh, we can talk on that side. Uh, Karina, many thanks for your presentation. Really, really interesting. Uh, I'm also glad that you met uh, Tony's dog while you were there, and he was part of the presentation. Uh, Tony, uh, always good to see you. I'm uh, looking forward to coming and visiting you and uh, eating that wonderful uh, pork again. Uh, Etienne, fantastic. What can I say? Hat off to you. Always inspiring. Um, Sina wouldn't be here without you. Congratulations again. Um, yeah. And I'll hand it over to also uh, Nick uh, again in Canada. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, I'm leaving inspired. I think, um, Karina, I love uh, I love the research that you're doing, and uh, the topic of agency is such an important topic. And so I, I love that you zeroed in on that. I'd love a copy of your slides if you're willing to share. It was a lot of information to take in very quickly, um, and. Um, I know some people in, in Rwanda, and I'm kind of contemplating the idea of Juliet making a connection there. Um, it's uh, when I originally met them, they were weaving baskets out of uh, water hyacinth. And um, so quite a powerful group of women uh, in, in, uh, in Rwanda in a small village that maybe there's an opportunity to do something there and uh, fund the expansion of your organization through training or whatever what, whatever makes sense. And you probably know better than I would what that would look like. But um, so I'll leave that with me as, a, as, a, as an exploration. And Etienne, I, as always, I think what you're doing is so good and so powerful and, and so right. So thank you for including uh, me and us in this uh, in this um, possibility. It's, it's uh, truly inspiring. So thank you. And over to Karina. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you for the nice feedback and the good questions, also giving me a chance to reflect on my thesis again, <laughs> because it's never ending. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, Etienne, to cooperate with you. And um, I'm already here a second time. I think that means something. <laughs> I'm still in Uganda, so... Um, and I was uh, visiting Sina and the summit. So yeah, it's um, yeah, I really like what you're what you're doing at the Sina as a Changu International. You have so many ambitious people who are really who really want to achieve something. And uh, yeah, it's really it's really good to work together and uh, and achieve something together. And uh, yeah, I'm about the slides. I can send them to you. Uh, I've also sent a link in the chat, if you haven't seen it, that there is um, the, the, the link to my thesis on the Sina website, so you can read the whole thesis. Uh, and there's also a little summary of it, but I can also forward you the slides. We just have to find a way how to do that. Maybe some like... Karina, I don't see that link. Can you add it again before we close? Yeah, okay. So I just added that, and that's the entire thesis. Um, I don't, I don't huh? see it. Is, is it just me? Oh, I just sent it to it, Jan. Yeah. Was that was that in the chat? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't need it anymore. I do it again. Need... Sorry. That's good that you say it. Okay. So Let now me... you should have it. Okay. Is that enough, or do you also want the slides? You can send the slides to me, sure. and I can send it to, to everyone after. 
Okay, yeah, then we do like that. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for having met you and uh, yeah, have a nice evening. And uh, who was, yeah, to, to Juliet? Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Etienne, for inviting me. I'm glad and super excited. Thank you so much for your connections, feedback, questions. It was a great experience and learning for me. I'm able to take all this to my team and also grow our enterprise. I can't wait connecting with you all in case you have anything, in case you have any connection, any uh, feedback, any growth, any learnings. I'm super excited and welcome. Thank you so much. Tony, you have the final words. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining us here today and, and hearing you and sharing different experiences, especially how you got to know about Sina. That was really amazing and interesting for me. You are always open to come if, if you visit here. Um, I am I am up for a visit to our local restaurant, as Nikki has shared, uh, to have some experience of our local delicacy here. I think it's only found in Uganda where we mix pork and uh, matoke and, and everything together. So I hope to host you here one time again, for those of you who have not been here in a while. So thank you so much. I wish you a, a great evening. Uh, greetings from PG Uganda. Yeah, great evening, good night, good morning, wherever you are. And thanks for coming and hopefully uh, see you soon and I'll follow up with you and we'll be in touch. Thank you and bye-bye.